Coming back to our topic, we know that four-sided shapes are called quadrilaterals. But do you also know that there are different types of these quadrilaterals? Let's look at them. First, we have the trapezium. In this type of quadrilateral, one pair of opposite sides is parallel to each other. Next, we have the parallelograms, where both pairs of opposite sides of the quadrilateral are parallel. The third type of quadrilateral is a rectangle, which is actually a special type of parallelogram, where all the angles of the parallelogram are right angles. And then we have the rhombus, here, where all four sides are equal. Now, for the fourth type, that is a square, we have all sides of the parallelogram which are equal and at right angles. Finally, we have the kite where two pairs of adjacent sides of the quadrilateral are equal. And as the name goes, a kite resembles the shape of a kite. Now that we have seen the different types of quadrilaterals, let me ask you a few questions. Can we call a square to be a rectangle also? Yeah? And what about a rhombus? Can a square be a rhombus? Yes, the answer is it does qualify to be a rectangle as well as a rhombus. Because if you take a rectangle and make all its sides equal, you get a square. At the same time, if you take a rhombus and make all its angles 90 degrees, that is again a square. Now, is a parallelogram also a trapezium? Yes. You know it is right, since both pairs of opposite sides of a parallelogram are parallel. Do you think we can call a kite to be a parallelogram? The answer is no, we can't. Why? Because its opposite sides are neither parallel nor equal. Only its adjacent sides are equal. That's why. Similarly, can we call a trapezium a parallelogram? No, right? Because in a trapezium, only one pair of the opposite sides is parallel. But in a parallelogram, both sides need to be parallel. Finally, can a rectangle be a rhombus? Well, no, it cannot be. Because all sides of a rectangle are not equal. In fact, a rectangle that is a rhombus is essentially a square, right? So, we've all studied triangles, right? Do you recall the angle sum property of a triangle? Well, let me revise it for you. According to the angle sum property of a triangle, the three angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Similarly, we also have an angle sum property for quadrilaterals. Let's look at it right now. Say I have a quadrilateral here, which is called ABCD. And now, all we need to do is prove that the sum of the four angles in a quadrilateral are equal to 360 degrees. This means that angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D is equal to 360 degrees. Let's begin by joining AC. Now, if you look at the quadrilateral, you'll see that we have two triangles ABC and ADC. Let's consider the angles of these two triangles as XYZ and PQR respectively. We already know that the addition of all three angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So let's first consider the triangle ABC and apply the angle sum property to it. We'll get X plus Y plus Z is equal to 180 degrees. Let's call this equation 1. Then we'll consider triangle ADC in which we will get P plus Q plus R is equal to 180 degrees. And that will be our equation number 2. Okay, next, we will add equations 1 and 2. By adding them, we'll get x plus y plus z plus p plus q plus r on the left-hand side, while on the right-hand side, we will have 180 plus 180, which gives us 360. Now, let's take a look at the diagram. As we can see, if we take together angles x and p, they make angle A. And similarly, if we take together angles Z and R, they join together to make angle C. So now, if we take a look at the equation again, we get angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D, which is equal to 360 degrees. Hence, proved. Now let me ask you something. 
What if you were given a problem wherein the angles of a quadrilateral are in a particular ratio? Say 3 is to 4 is to 5 is to 6. So let's assume the angles to be 3x, 4x, 5x and 6x. Now using the theorem we know that the sum of all four angles of the quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So now by adding these angles we know we'll get 360 degrees as their sum. Therefore, we get 3x plus 4x plus 5x plus 6x, which is 18x, and that is equal to 360 degrees. Then, we take 18 to the right-hand side of the equation to get x is equal to 360 upon 18, which gives us x is equal to 20. Now, let us replace x with 20 in the expressions of the angles we'll get the first angle that is 3x as 3 into 20 which is equal to 60 degrees. The second angle 4x will be 4 into 20 that is 80 degrees. Similarly, the third angle will be 5 into 20 that is 100 degrees and the fourth angle will be 6 into 20 which is equal to 120 degrees. And so we have the four angles of the quadrilateral as 60 degrees, 80 degrees, 100 degrees and 120 degrees. Now that was simple enough, wasn't it? Remember how we discussed the different types of quadrilaterals when we started off? In fact, we even referred to parallelograms as special quadrilaterals. Are you wondering what is so special about them after all? There are a lot more properties related to quadrilaterals that we have to prove and we'll pick them up one by one in the next segments. Until then, make sure you are revising properties that you have studied so far and I will see you very soon. Tutormate. For more amazing videos, download the free app on Apple App Store and Google Play Store.